Hello and welcome to this week's question, which is how do I fully define a spline? Okay, so let's flip into SolidWorks. Okay, so I've got a part file here, which I've already got a sketch in. I'm just going to create a new sketch on the same plane. And I'm just going to load the spline tool and I'm going to snap a spline to some of the points in my original sketch. Press escape when I'm done. And I have a spline here, which at the moment is completely uniform from top to bottom via this center line. The minute I start dragging this around and do something like this, you can see I've completely lost the symmetry between the top and the, the top and the bottom. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and fully define this spline to make it uniform again. So the way you do that is to either add relations to the spline itself or to the handles on the spline. So one way I can do this is to actually add a relation to the spline. So let's do it on this one up here. So if I select this center line and then this handle, I can make them collinear. And then maybe for the bottom one, I can then select um, the center line and the spline itself and then make that tangent. And that will produce the same result. The next one I'm going to do is this handle here. I'm just going to select the handle, make it vertical. That will affect the handle on the other side as well. And you can see here as I move this around now, you can see all the handles moving. So to control the magnitude of the actual handle itself, you just add a dimension. So you just load the smart dimension. And I just need to make sure that these have the same values. If I make that 100, and I make this one 100, and I also make this one 100, that has now fully defined this spline. I can't move any of these points anymore. Okay, it's all fully defined. So that's exactly how you can fully define a spline. Remember you have to have the points on the spline um, controlled and then also the spline line itself using a relation or by adding a relation to the handle and then dimensioning the magnitude of um, that handle itself. Okay. Thanks for watching.